didn't get a chance to meet personally because I tried to walk around and meet as many people as possible. I am Aisha Adams, and the topic that we're going to do is transformational transactions. And this is where my presentation gets a little bit tricky because everybody that I walked around to, they're like, so tell me about this transformational transactions. <laughs> so just so that people don't feel like I'm sitting here and this is not where I want to be, I'm going to explain transformational transactions before we get into it because there's so many other wonderful workshops. I want you to get the best out of this experience today. Okay, so what do I, how do I define transformational transactions? Transformational transactions are transactions that after I've spent my money, oh, they are bae, right? They are boo. I love them. I don't buy that product one time. I buy that product over and over and over and over again. I don't want to hear about this other product because I love this product. So we're going to talk about how to create transactions for your customers that make them lifelong lovers of your product. And I think that is the single most important thing that a business owner needs, loyal people who purchase over and over and over again. So that is transformational transactions. If you got to get up and leave, it's all good in the hood. I'm good with it. That's what we're talking about in this room. All right. <laughs> all right. So <clears throat> that's my little premature spiel. Who am I? I'm Aisha Adams, and um, I am first a writer and a blogger. That is my true love and passion. So everything that I talked to you about today is about not something that I went to school to learn. I literally learned this with a broken neck, broken wrist, broken leg, and I took it to this guy to get answers, and he was like, you need a business. So I'm not telling you things that I have not done. I think that's what's going to make my presentation stand out because you can go to my blog and you can see these things in practice, okay? And sometimes you can go to my business and you can see them in practice because I'm just like the rest of y'all. Sometimes I sweat. Uh, <laughs> but um, that's who I am. I'm a mother and a wife. Um, I serve on several boards. I'm definitely feeling like a part of the Asheville community as well as the Hendersonville Brevard community. This is my home. And I'm just trying to contribute and be the best person I can be, like all of you. So after I went to Gary's office, I decided to start Aisha Adams Media. And basically, I feel that my, well, my theory is that if you connect, like if you can truly connect with people, and then you can have a conversation with them that inspires them, you can convert them, right? Because at the end of the day, it's about the conversion. But there are steps, right? There's levels to get to somebody's wallet because we live in an economy and a society where $25 is a lot of money. We say it's not a lot of money, but let somebody try to charge you $25 for something. You're like, I got questions. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like the average American does not make $25 a year. And so it's imperative that if we are going to ask somebody for their $25, I mean $25 an hour, if we're going to ask somebody to work more than an hour, because most Americans don't make $25 an hour. I know we got some rock star people in here, but the average American makes about $12 an hour. So if we're going to ask somebody for $25, it's a different situation, right? Because we can't expect people to be where we are. So I'm going to try to talk to you about like, how to get people to spend their money. But the, the theory is you have to connect with them, then you have to have a conversation with them, and then you're able to convert them. So that's who we are, that's what we do. Um, I do coaching, consulting, um, a little bit of web design, a little bit of everything, business planning. I help business owners find um, grants for their business. I have a grant that I work with specifically, and I also help people with their loan process, like through Mountain BizWorks. So <clears throat> I've already kind of defined transformational transaction, but we'll get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. Transformation transactions yield positive change in a client's life or business that occur because they're interacting with your business. So this is when we get interactive and we start talking about brands that have transformed us. And I talk about my son a lot because I'm a mom and he's way cooler because he's a teenager. So I took my son to, he's got a thing for cinnamon rolls. Okay, he's the thing for cinnamon rolls. So I took, I was like, we went to Publix and Publix had the cinnamon rolls for 80 cents. He was like, I'm in love with Publix. These cinnamon rolls are 80 cents. 
So then I had a meeting or something, and he was with me, and I went to Biltmore, I mean, to um, the bakery um, shop on Biltmore Avenue, and he had a cinnamon roll from there. And he looked at me, and he said to me, no cinnamon roll will ever taste the same again. <laughs> and any time that you would like to make me happy, you can purchase the cinnamon roll. And it sounds silly, right? But he's a college student, and I said, the cinnamon rolls at Publix are 80 cents, and the cinnamon rolls at Biltmore are $2.99. He doesn't have a job, y'all. That's a lot of money. Again, it's a transaction for someone whose allowance is $25 a week. And he has to go to school and buy coffee and all that stuff because he's in college. And he would rather spend $2.99 on a cinnamon roll than 80 cents. That's how important this conversation is. And that's why I, I'm nervous about it and I really want to make sure we're all on the same page. Because I want people to pay that premium for your product. I want them to understand the value, your value. And when you, if, if there's anybody in the room, because I know we've all been in this stage in our business, if you're worried about your pricing, when you add this com component, the value of your product goes up. So that helps, right? So in transformational transaction, the end game is this. Um, you want to power the aspirations of your client. You want your client, let's say for example, you have a cleaner, a cleaning item, a cleaning, a cleaner, cleaning business, and you have cleaning products. When I finish my kitchen, I don't ever want to, you want me never to want to talk about Clorox Pine Sol again. You want me to be like, oh, I don't feel like I'm going to get cancer. You want me to feel like, you want people to walk in my house and say, oh, what's that smell? Or you want me so happy when I finish cleaning my house, like all good people do, you want me taking a picture of it, posting it on Facebook, <laughs> with your link in the name of your business, right? So that's what we're, what we're trying to get to. So you want to power my aspirations so I can show you off. Help us reach our goals, change our habits, fuel our ongoing transformations that we want to see in our own career, in our personal lives, and in our finances, and you have created a lifelong customer. Right? You go to the salon, ladies, you get that perfect cut, that perfect color is life. Your stylist, you like, I'm never changing. Right? Men, you go to the barber shop. If he gets you that just right look, you're like, I can't go to any other barber. You sit there while that barber is free, and there are three other barbers because he's changed your life powered your personal aspirations, made you feel good, and so there you are. So why should we do this? Um, because when people buy over and over again, it's good for business. Because when people tweet out your links, Facebook your links, Instagram about your products, it's good for you. And when people are willing to open up your newsletters, watch your videos, and comment, that's all good for you. So, this relationship that you're trying to build is supposed to give you an engagement. It's like dating, so it's kind of hard, right? <laughs> it's like dating, and it's kind of hard. So before I tell you how to do this, I'm going to tell you, like, businesses, because there might be someone in the room now saying, I'm not really sure if, I, if my product is transformational. So we need to talk about what kind of things are transformational. So, of course, health, fitness, body, and wellness. I always talk about my three favorite health things. One, my Apple Watch. Love it, love it, love it. Two, my Fitness Pal. Love it, love it, love it. And then three, the health app on my phone. They all integrate together to create a system that has helped me lose 19 pounds. So they have transformed me, and I do not go back. No, I don't care what you are using to lose weight. No, I don't care what's in your app. No, you cannot persuade me to give up my Apple Watch, to give up my, my Fitness Pal, or to give up my health app because I've lost 19 pounds. That's transformation. Serious transformation. Okay, so then personal finances, money education apps, um, financial estate planning services, mortgage and banking investments can also be transformational. Um, self-management and behavior changes. All of us look at ourselves and we want to be better. 
I don't care who you are, like you always are like, I can't believe she thinks that about herself. But we all want to be better. And so if it's an app or a product that changes behavior, it can be transformational for a person. Um, personal and professional development, coaching, books, seminars, online education courses, workshops, skill building, up-leveling performance, and enjoyment of life, especially in the realm of how-to, career development and entrepreneurship. All of that is transformational. Because if I was working for somebody else and I was able to divorce my cubicle and make my own schedule and my money, my life is transformed. If I lived in an apartment and I was paying rent and I used your app and I learned how to buy a house, like my life is different, I'm a homeowner. So that's what we're looking at. But it can be something as simple, again, as a cleaner in my house that I, when my mom comes, she says, oh, your house smells so good, instead of why don't you ever clean up? That's a transformation because it changes the relationship between mother and child, right? So you have to really look at your product and really figure out what is your transformational pivot. And if you don't have that, that's fine. We can talk about it at the happiness bar at 2.30 or you make an appointment. But you have to look at your product and say, how is my product making the person who's purchasing it life different? And we have to break it down. If I, if I work two hours a month to pay for your product a month, look, I want results. I want something different. And I honestly, to be honest with y'all, I'm going to be real trill, true and real. If I pay $2, I want to know what I'm getting because I'm frugal like that. So it's really important that when you're selling your product, you're able to sell, this is going to change your life. This is how, okay? It's just important because people really do need a return on investment. Um, I, I feel, feel like for a while there, return on investment was becoming a buzzword because people would ask, like, what's my return on investment? And I'd be like, you really understand ROI? Not really, but I'm just saying it because it's what I mean. But people do want something in exchange for what you're giving them. So I've been working on this wheel. This is like the third or fourth iteration of this wheel. And it is called the customer journey wheel. If you ever heard of the hero's journey, you will be able to sit this on top, right? Um, so the hero's journey is that basically you start off, you're nobody. And then you get a call and you're kind of like, eh, no, I don't really want to save the world today. And you, you turn around. We've seen it. We've seen it on all the, all the um, superhero movies, right? And then you come back and you're like, maybe. For us, that is the curious buyer. And so at the beginning stage, I may not understand why your cleaner is important. But through your emails at the beginning of your funnel, you need to let me know why is your product important? Why should I do business with you? What are the facts around your product? What are the facts around your industry? What are the facts around your company? At the beginning, it's just like when you meet a dude. What's your name? Where you work? How many kids you have? Who your mama and them? Like all of that <laughs> has to come with this customer. And I think a lot of times in our work, we're just like, hey, can you buy my product? But we don't introduce our product in a streamlined, systematic way to transform our customer's belief in what we're doing and what we're feeling, right? So at the beginning stages, I like to think of it as you're trying to get them to decide they are going to commit to your product. Um, you're trying to get them to set a clear, smart goal, right? Smart, specific, measurable, um, trackable, recordable, all that stuff. And then you're trying to get them to find out why is this important? I want to lose 20 pounds because I want to be sexy again. I, like, that's going to make my husband look at me different. Like that's transformation, right? I want to lose 20 pounds because I'm tired of being tired when I get up the steps. Transformation. I do not want to be at work like, give me a minute before you ask your question. So that transformed my life, right? So that's something that I still work on. So when, uh, when you're first starting out, in, and the way that I would do this is in my funnel, in my email funnel, when people sign up for my email, my first two or three emails are about my industry, my product, why? Why is this important? Helpful? Okay. Then, now I know, okay, I know eating meat is bad for you. I know that it saves the environment. It makes the planet better if you go vegan. And so I got all the facts, and eh, I might try, right? But I'm really busy, and I might try your product. Because this is really what's going through your customer's mind. 
So you have to get to the novice buyer. So here's the novice buyer. So now they have your freebie, they understand your product, they have a good reason to use it. They, they keep saying, I'm gonna start a diet one day, or I'm gonna try this one day. And now they're in that phase of, you have to convert them over in a small way because you have to help them be a beginner. You gotta be their big sister or their big brother or their guide. You have to guide them through this. Nobody knows as much about your product and industry as you do. So you have to give it to them. And we are in the information age, so you have to tell them. It's just not, I'm gonna know it for you and trust me, you have to share it. So in that novice buying stage, for me, that's when I'm like, hey, do you wanna set up a consultation, sit down and talk? Or I'm like, hey, I have an online ebook that you can purchase that'll tell you more about this specific thing. But you wanna be in a position where you also are doing something where they can ask questions and they feel connected to you and they know how to reach you and they feel like if they spend their $25 and they get lost, they can come back to you, right? And that can be done really simply. I do Facebook Lives once a week, 20 minutes. Got a question, I'm sitting there, what's your question, baby? How can I help you? Boom, very easy. But you would be willing to spend your $25 with me if you can find me. But if there's somebody who doesn't have a customer service, like why would you spend money with them? So give them an opportunity at this phase to really feel like they know you and connect. Have office hours, have space. Um, don't give up on them and realize that they may give up on you and that it's your job to re-engage them, right? And so what I mean by that is I have been saying for so long I'm gonna go to this restaurant, I got my coupon, I've decided I'm gonna go to this restaurant, but I was just in the mood for Ethiopian on this day and I still didn't make it. So you have to come back and we call this triggers in the marketing world and give me a trigger to remind me to come back. That's your job again, right? So uh, you, you're, you're in a relationship. Things don't feel like they used to. Somebody gotta reignite that spark, right? So it's just like dating, you just don't give up you keep trying with that customer. You don't spam them, but you do <laughs> remind them. <laughs> um, and what I love is like on my watch at a certain time, if I haven't made my exercise steps, it beeps. If I haven't tracked my breakfast, it beeps. Oh, it, I'm being reminded to stay on my hero's journey because I'm going to be slim one day. <laughs> I'm reminded, like I get triggers, they remind me, and it's really helpful to me. Um, make small goals and rewards so that they can feel accomplished. Small goals and rewards. All right, and then track your results because this is the most complicated part of the funnel because you're trying to really understand what's happening in that buyer's mind. But if you track your results, you'll have data that you can then look at and say, this really works, this really does not work, right? So like people, like my audience, my blog audience, they will watch me live on Facebook for hours, like three straight hours. I'm like, y'all, my phone died. They're like, come back, <laughs> right? But if I put an audio recording inside of a blog post, they will not listen. My audience just does not care for audio, but I know that for trying to send them audio and tracking and sending them Facebook lives and tracking and sending them blogs and tracking and then redo it again, oh, redo it. So I know what they like. And at first it's hard, do not give up, because you're like only four people read this and only six people read this. It takes time. You can't get married in a week. You can't date somebody and like just be married in a week. It's gonna take your customers a minute to develop this relationship with you. So you have to do the work. Um, and so um, share your progress. So one of the cool things that you can do to sort of have get your customers to share their progress is like the best ones I've seen is the P90X video where you have the people who are like, I look like this. And then I did all of this, and now I look like this. And you're like, oh, I'm totally doing that, <laughs> right? Because they showed you their journey. And you're like, this is real, because you see her then, and you see her now, and you believe her. 
because it's a transformation. And you see him, he's like, there's one guy, he's like, I broke my back, I broke my leg, he's my favorite, I watch him a lot, he's like, but I, um, now, you know, I, I'm, I'm in shape, and he has like one leg, and he's like all on the video, and he's amazing, and I'm like, if he can do it, I can do it. So you really want your customers to share their transformations with your other customers, because you're the expert, so when you do it, it looks fancy, but when their neighbor Margaret does it, where Margaret? <laughs> when Margaret does it, then it's like, oh, I can really do this. So that's what you want to build in. So like in your funnel, in this particular section, the novice buyer, you want to definitely have like um, testimonials from your customers. You want to have um, in your funnel, you also want to have, like I said, some type of meet and greet. Maybe you do a Zoom call. Maybe you do a Facebook Live. Maybe you say, email me your questions, and on Thursday mornings, I'll answer two questions. Make it so that it's something that you can do, but they need that in that funnel, because they need to know if I give her my credit card number, she's not gonna run off, right? And don't worry about how small the transaction is, because some of us are cheap. You ask me for $2.99, I better be able to find you. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I think that is what you should put in that particular part of the funnel. And once you start doing that, then your customer's like, okay, I'm in this to win it. I didn't give up. Now I lost 10 pounds. Let me share. Right? And then now they're sharing. And so they become a transformed buyer. And a transformed buyer is the person who all they do is talk about your product. And I don't see any of my clients in here, but anytime anybody or friends, but anytime anybody's like, hey, yeah, this is my Android, I look, I'm like, I'm not touching that. I don't even touch, like, I don't do that, right? And so it's like, it's a, it's a cult following, it's a fraternity, it's a friendship, it's a relationship. That's what you're wanting to do with your customers, and WordPress is the best platform to do it because all the plugins are there for you to use. So when I say, hey, you need to, um, do the live, you can send out a blog post that covers, I do my live at this time, you can automate it in WordPress to do it for you weekly so you don't have to worry about it, right? Um, so everything that I'm talking to you about, you can do through WordPress, which, what is, which is what makes WordPress so great. But this is the part that the techies can't put in for you. This is the part your coder can't do for you. And I do marketing, and I can sit with you and I can hold your hand. I can help write a marketing plan. We can do press releases. We can do social media campaigns. But until you're ready to change lives and be a change agent in your own business, it's not even really much I can do for you. You got to transform the way you see your product, the way you deliver your product, the way people experience your product in order to get this kind of buy in. And they're out there. I think, I don't know if anybody in here, but I'm just going to do a random survey. Sade fans. Any Sade fans? Sade does not have to advertise. <laughs> she don't have, like, that's my girl. Like, Sade is a great example. She don't have to advertise. She doesn't have to send out 99 blogs. Like, hey, we rock with Sade. And let me tell you why. Because Soldier of Love, Your Love is King, is the same song. She know her audience. She not trying to do anything. If she know, I do not want a hip hop song from Sade. She not out. She's like, I know what my audience likes. I deliver. I know how to deliver, and that's how I'm a millionaire. <laughs> that's what she does, right? I noticed about Apple commercials. They ain't talking to none of us old people. None of us. <laughs> like they got people on skateboards and colors, and they are flipping. And you're like, I want one. <laughs> because they know as Apple users like we want to be sleek and fresh and fly and if the 18 year olds are doing it that's what we want to be doing right they know that I don't even I don't think they even talk in Apple commercials have y'all ever heard anybody actually physically speak <laughs> no this is a real question has anyone ever physically heard anyone physically speak in an Apple commercial just the music, right? The active, happy music that they know that my 18-year-old is going to be bopping to. 
then I'm like, what you bopping to? Because I want to be cool too. I'll spend $800 on a phone too. <laughs> now that's $1,600, right? And so that's what you want to really instill in your customers. And it's possible. It is really possible. So what I want to tell you guys is, I feel like at work, Camp Asheville, like y'all are my peeps. Or at least Sarah makes me feel like y'all are my peeps. Um, and so I really want to give you some like hard on things. So <clears throat> when people have a reason for why they do things, this is one of my questions, but I want to give you this piece um, of information. I want to tell y'all my personal challenge. So I work with a lot of customers and I truly love it. But I find that people really think this is the color, cut and paste, copy by number kind of situation. So when I tell my client, what I want you to do is get some magazines, and I want you to build a customer in your mind. They're like, huh? And then the next meeting, I come back, and they haven't cut out a face for their customer. And I'm like, well, how are we going to know who we're writing to? We can't write copy if you don't have an ideal customer that you're talking to, right? Apple talks to the young, they don't even talk to the young people. Apple shows pictures to the young people, and then we all go by the phone. So you can talk to one target group of people, and then everybody else still comes along, but you got to be talking to one person, right? You have to be talking to one person. So I'm going to give y'all this homework assignment. I know y'all ain't going to do it, but I'm telling y'all, if y'all don't know who y'all ideal customer is, and if y'all ain't, like, does anybody here name their car? Right. You got to name your customer. You got to name. You need to know. These are the things you need to know. You want to write this down. You want to know, is my customer married? Is my ideal customer married? Because if my ideal customer is married, that's going to affect my sales calendar. Right? Because I need a Father's Day sale. But if my ideal customer are 55-year-old widows, Father's Day does not exist on my sales schedule. I don't need them. So you need to know, is my customer married? What are my customer's aspirations? What really gets them going? Is it that VIP lifestyle? Apple, I love, like, I, I live to watch what my new phone is gonna do. I like the fancy presentation. I also like the Tesla presentations. That's the kind of audience I am, though. That's who, who's, who, they're talking to me. Like, is your audience like that? Are your, is your audience outdoorsy? Because that's gonna change when and how you are able to really connect with them. Does my, does my ideal client have kids? These are things you got to know. You want to know if there was a concert, what would my ideal client's favorite concert be? Do you know why you need to know that? Because you need to know the other brands that your clients have crushes on. <laughs> you need to know that. Perfect example. Beyonce drops a song. She mentions Red Lobster. Number one, Beyonce knows where I'm from, Red Lobster is the joint on Sunday. <laughs> so she knew her audience already loves Red Lobster, so she put it in the song. And Red Lobster already loves Beyonce, so guess what I got? Bay Cheddar Biscuits. You can't beat it! <laughs> Y'all are laughing, but Guess who got the last laugh? They made millions that weekend. Because those two brands were able to align. And maybe we're, you know, we're in Asheville, and maybe my brand is small and your brand is medium and we get together. But if we're able to create a cash flow magic like that, that's really what this is about. So you have to get into your customer's mind in a way that is artistic that is kind of spooky. You need to give her a name. You need to know if he dyes his hair, what brand of hair dye he uses. You need to know him because that's going to drive your content. And now you're on a journey. Because if your ideal client, for me, like my ideal client is a new person in business. I like newbies in business because I really want to be able to sit with them in multi, like multi-faceted ways to be able to assist them and hold their hand. When they get to a certain point, I'm like, go be great, and then tell other people who are starting up about me. And you need to move on to a different venue as well, 
Like, I, that's, that's kind of how I have it. But what makes that great is I know who the next step of people that I want people to work with. So I work with those people so that we share a common language. So guess what happens when someone comes to Sarah and they don't have enough followers or time or money. She's like, I should speak my language, let her get you ready, and then come back to me. Because that's the power of that collaborative branding. So it works both ways. My clients are supposed to leave me, go work with Sarah, who's my friend, who's helped me in my business, and, and her clients that she's not ready for, who aren't ready for her, she sends to me. Transformational, right? Because I'm not just here for the minute, I'm here for your whole hero's journey, from going from working, from being overworked um, and underpaid to being an entrepreneur. I'm gonna help you transform. My lot, my step, my brick is gonna make a difference in your life. And if your product isn't doing that, then I'm glad you were here in the workshop, but you might have to go back to product development, look for ways to make it more transformational. And it's possible because in our companies, we pivot all the time. In our companies, we, um, we change things. So if right now, if you have a product, you're not sure it's transformational, see me at the happiness bar. If we get to the point where we can't find a transformational point, then we have to look at how great is your product and how can we make it better? Because everybody should be making money. It's a really wonderful thing. <laughs> and I have a coach that I work with. Her name is um, Nicole Waters, and she always talks about rich friends. And she really um, inspired me because she's like, I want rich friends. Because if my friend's rich, I'm never broke. I want rich friends too. And so what I'm saying to you is like, if you really want to have a kick-ass product, you have to, have to make it so that your customer is not just buying the product and walking away. You have to make it so that they feel connected. They understand it. Like the best thing you can do is like deliver your product and then get a, give somebody a secret to how to make it last longer. So they feel like, you know, like, oh, I'm making this last longer, so I'm saving money. But you're like, I'm showing you how to make it last longer because we're going to be in relationship for 10 years, for 20 years, for 30 years. So. How are we on time? Are we good? Okay, cool. So the last thing I want to tell you about like making your um, customer profile and being committed to it is once you're done with it, you got to put it up in your house. You got to put it up in your office. You have to change the culture of your staff. Even if you have contractors, they have to know your customer. They have to buy into this. But if everything you do is customer driven, how can you lose? If everything you do is driven to give your customer the very best experience, how can you lose? So it's great. I, I actually wish my talk was like earlier because I think it sets the tone for like the other classes because when you're going into these techie classes, you got to think about if I put this plug in, in what's my end user's experience going to be like? Because a lot of times we do things for us. We build our WordPress websites for us. we like, oh, I love this marketing campaign. Oh, look at me. Like, right? We do things for ourselves and we forget like all of this is about a transformational transaction for somebody who could care less about WordPress. Somebody who could care less about CSS code. They just want to know if I give you my credit card, you're not going to run away. You're going to help me change my life, and my life is going to be better because I spent money with you. That's the real nuts and bolts of business, and that's what you have to do in one part of your brain while all the other parts of your brain are doing all that other stuff. And I am here today just to tap that part of your brain so that you can begin to think. Before you have the um, WordPress night of <laughs> never-ending techie stuff like, how is this affecting my customer? Before you make a decision to spend money with another company, how does this affect my customer? Are my, does my customers care if I'm an environmentalist or not? Do my, you know, like that, all those things. So 
that is really the spiel that I have. And I want to use the rest of the time for questions because I might need to get more technical. So we'll use this time for questions, comments. Yes. So I think, I agree. Oh, okay, sorry. But uh, then it's been said to me that if, if there's no need to do that, because by the time we get to a second phase or a third phase beyond the home phase, if you still need to sell any testimonials, you haven't done your, your job up front. So it's wasting your time, it's too busy. That sounds like, that sounds like a coder. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like, so, and when I say that for my coders, let me explain what I mean. That sounds like somebody who's very technical, like who doesn't understand that before I give you my $20, boo, I'm reading a whole website, I'm looking for your mentions, I'm on um, Yelp, I didn't text my friend, you know about such and such. That's how it happens. So I will give you the statistic that um, I think it was something like 80% of people before they actually make a purchase, they buy online. And I'm going to tell you that testimonials are super important, not just on your website. I don't think I have it on every page of my website, but when I get a testimonial, I have a process. I put it on Facebook first, then I send it out in my newsletter, then I share it on my freebie. Then I'm like, did you tell such and such what you said? Because I think she needs to hear that, right? I use my testimonials in different ways. And like, there should be a whole class on testimonials because there's so many different types of testimonials. And testimonials are just like, you need them. So, I mean, I put them anywhere. Uh, so, if you could, you know, get a customer in the room, mm -hmm. ask them one question, mm -hmm. you're really good at understanding who your customers are. Mm -hmm. For you, what would that question be? Probably who's their favorite rapper. Right, because if they like somebody who has like tattoos and they're really aggressive, that means like I can do some really free things with them. But if they're like, I really like somebody who's more like mainstream, like then that means they're more mainstream. So that probably would be my question. But you know, um, I've seen people ask if I was coming to dinner with you, what food would I cook? And I'm like, I don't know how to decipher that. And I've seen somebody ask, what's your spirit animal? <laughs> so there's like some other ones. I used to tell, when I first started, I used to tell my customers to think about their brand as a car, and I would ask them if their brand could be a car, what kind of car would it be? Because like, if they're like, oh, I'm a Honda, you're like, good value. Oh, I'm a Tesla, you're like, okay, let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> All right, we got Subaru. <laughs> right? So it's like, okay, yeah. Subaru, great value. BMW, oh, okay. Right. Any other questions? Do you have a product that's really designed to be used once? Mm -hmm. I understand how it would be transformational at the time, but you wouldn't have that ongoing relationship necessarily. How do you how do you stay top of mind? Right. So I what came to my mind was a plastic cup and a cup of coffee. Like you can only really have a cup like one cup of coffee at a time, but Let's just do a quick survey. Raise your hand if you have a favorite kind of coffee that you buy for your house and you won't switch. So it can be done. It's like you just got to get into the nuts and bolts of it. What if it's like a roofer? What's a roofer? A roofer. Like if you're only going to have your roof done once. Right, but you're not going to have your roof done once. I happen to know this. I feel so blessed right now. The speakers, y'all know what I mean? Okay, so we got a new roof. It cost us $5,000. I was like, we could just get a new house. My husband said that wasn't going to be possible, so we got a roof. 
and <laughs> Bob's so serious. I was like, finally, we can just get a new house. So we got a new roof, and we got the roof, and um, I really just don't ever want to have to buy a roof again. Like, this is me really talking to you for, as a, a woman homeowner, whatever, whatever my life is right now. And um, two things. My husband came to me yesterday. He was like, do you want to get a patio from those same people? Because he liked the service. So if, that, if they offer other services, that you can do it that way. But also, like, people get new shingles on their roof replaced. So if you just go ahead and give me the 10-year plan, go ahead and take an extra $2,000. Promise me I ain't got to deal with that roof no more for the next so many years. And it becomes this single product that's a lifelong product. Does that help? Right, yeah. right. But I'm, what I'm really telling my friends is though, and I never have to do roofing again. Like that, because when people buy a roof, and I'm just gonna ask, because I don't, like I was really like distraught. We were putting $5,000 into something that I couldn't really physically see, because you know, it's above my head. Um, <laughs> it's like, we could totally get a new couches, new beds, like all this stuff. But like, I don't want to have to deal with my roof again. So how can you lock me in so that that never happens again. That's what's gonna make you different from any other roofing company in Western North Carolina. And that's why people will come back to you because it's not just a one-time transaction. You talked a little bit about building a, a customer profile. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're an e-commerce uh, website that's, that's selling widgets. Mm -hmm. Now you can sell a little bit from Google Analytics. But mm -hmm. Okay, when I was winging my business, like my friend that was in her last talk, she was in here a few minutes ago, I used Divi. Are you familiar with Divi? Okay, so we're, we're gonna talk about Divi for a second. That's the best example that I have. Well, Divi has a group. And I don't care, when I am deep down in WordPress, I go to my Divi group and I ask questions. So in that Divi group, it's nothing for Divi to drop in a survey and ask me for my next upgrade of my widget, what do you wanna see? You will get so much information. You'll be like, I wish they stopped telling me <laughs> what they want to see. So the way that you, so to me, that's still transformational, right? Because I buy your widget. See, let me tell you, I, bought, I, I was trying to get a Facebook pixel. Anybody else feel this pain? And so I'm like, I'm just going to buy a plug-in, throw in the numbers. And then I bought the plug-in. I paid $30 for the plug-in. No tech support. Whatever they said was helping me looked like I didn't know what was going on. Right? So what I'm saying is like for a widget, I'm just gonna speak as a novice web designer, like we want you to know us. We want you to make things that work for us. We want you to make things that do things that transform our customer lives so that we can love you forever and you can be the man behind the curtain. So how can you and your <coughs> business make that happen? You gotta survey me, you gotta talk to me, you gotta focus group me. That's gonna make your widgets 10 times as great. So my best friend has an MBA from um, an Ivy League school, and we talk about business all the time. And we were talking about Netflix and how Netflix went from, I'll supply you a movie, to making the best movies and TV shows. They are number one, because here's the thing, and I, I teach this often, one of the goals you have to have in business is an innovation goal. So if you have an innovation goal every quarter, you'll get that content that you need to make your upgrades better. So you can't be marketing without being development. <laughs> like you have to kind of be all over the place. What I do, what I would like to think of myself is, is the entrepreneur whisperer. Like eventually I want to be like that person that the entrepreneur keeps in their back pocket. Because I know a lot of stuff. I like solving problems. And I learn a lot about business. So I, I can do marketing, but you can't do marketing without development. Because if I want to have a funnel do something, I have to be able to communicate with the developer in a way that they understand me and that they can make my vision happen. So when you meet a marketer that's like, I don't know anything about development, run. If you meet a <laughs> because they have to be able to communicate in that language because the developer has to know what to develop. And so the marketer has to see the customer's experience. 
Any more questions? Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly the same thing. You know, you're you're talking to one person. Yep. You're talking to one person. He even said, he would wake up and say, I love you, I love you. I mean, <laughs> this is just an incredible relationship. So when you see another person, you're not talking to one person, you're talking to one person. So anyway. Yeah. I just really want y'all to know, none of this like I made up, unfortunately. I wish I was that smart. This is a combination of hearing people talk, like Gary, like Sarah, like other people in the room, Marcus, listening to them talk, taking it back to my website and trying to figure out how to make that ding ding from that PayPal ring. <laughs> <laughs> like that is my whole spiel, right? So like if I'm telling you, like once I started talking to one person, I got more people. And it was amazing because I, I'm like, I'm talking to like Katrina and Katrina's 25 and she lives in Brooklyn. And then I was like, here is Jody, who's 64, who lives in Nebraska. Like, hey, Aisha, popping in because she sees me talking to Sabrina and she gets what I'm saying. Because when you're not talking to one person, you're talking to everybody. And all of us can't talk at this. We don't all, like somebody in here is like, why did I sit in here? Like everybody doesn't feel good about this situation, I'm sure. And so I'm like, <laughs> everybody doesn't feel good because I'm not communicating with them where I need to be communicating with them. So like it's, you really do have to shoot for one set person and it'll help you drive your, um, your content in so many ways, the direction of your content, when to have your sales, just everything drives, it drives everything. Mm -hmm. And a great, a great way to look at it too, Walmart, they do a good job at this. Walmart does a like, bad job at a lot of stuff, but they do a really good job at this, the customer journey. Because when school supplies, like it's time to get school supplies, you walk into Walmart, you don't have to go up to the school, you find your child's class, you buy the supplies, they, they've provided you with the list. Why would you go to Target? Like, I, like let's be real, I love Target, like it's my jam. <laughs> But if I have to take an extra trip to the school to pick up the piece of paper to get the supplies, I'm going to go to Walmart because they have it before the first day of school. So I send my munchkin to school with all of his supplies. Win for me. That's transformational. Huh? They put it right up front, right next to the school supplies. Another thing that they do, I'm telling you, this is transformational marketing. They're marketing to one person, and I'll tell you who they're marketing to. They're marketing to that cute girl with the newborn baby who just was married and who don't have any money because she's just starting out. That's who they're marketing to. That's, all, that's who Walmart is really talking to. And anytime we feel like that person, we go to Walmart. And so <laughs> you're like, I, I, I think I've been in business for 10 years, but my check looks like it's been six months. I'm going to go to Walmart because I, I <laughs> right? So like they do such a good job because husbands don't have to remember holidays if they shop at Walmart. Like it's Valentine's Day. They push all of their stuff up front, right? It's Father's Day. All the Father's Day stuff goes up front. So y'all following me? Okay. Why don't we do that on our websites? Why don't we do that on our websites? Why don't we do that in our newsletters? That's all I'm trying to tell y'all is I look at what Walmart doing and I'm like, that lady is the richest woman in the world. And all she's doing is making it easier for her customer, bringing everything up front. That's all they do. That's the magic of Walmart. You're like, I didn't know Halloween was coming. Oh, let me go ahead and grab my candy while I'm here. They do all the work for us. You need to do the work for your customer. You got to do the work for your customer. Oh, if you give me your email address, I have on this platform that I use every now and again, it's a WordPress website that my son and I use. We have a group, 
plugin, and we've never had any problems with it. I can get the name of it for you through WordPress if you leave me with your email. Um, Sarah, do you have one off the top of your head? No. But I have one. But I, my suggestion is social media. My, and, and not even necessarily Facebook. All the time I heard somebody say Facebook. But what about like using your um, hashtags for Twitter if your audience is really on Twitter or using LinkedIn groups? So don't be, like, I love Facebook, but there are other possibilities. You also have, like, Slack, which is amazing. And even though it's a separate thing outside of your website, I never see people having a problem with Slack. I watched a girl have, like, 300 clients in Slack. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Marcus? And you don't have to do the moderating of the group or all of that. It saves a lot of time if you're a solopreneur. And the video stays there forever, so you can like reshare it and stuff in your content later. I we have we have five more minutes. Any more questions? Okay, so this is how you reach me. It's so complicated. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. My website is AishaAdamsMedia.com. A I S H A. A D A M S Media dot com. Also, I am Aisha Adams Johnson on Facebook. That's my personal Facebook. I will be your personal friend. <laughs> and I will stalk you about my business stuff at another time because I think it's disrespectful to do that at the beginning of a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, you don't let all your crazy out on the first date with a man. No, no, no. So I'm not going to spam you with my business information on that level. Um, and then the other thing I want you guys to know is that you can reach me also through Mountain BizWorks. So if you are a Mountain BizWorks client and you're like, oh, I want to hang out with Aisha, get in touch with Jill. So you can reach me that way too. And that concludes my talk. But I'm going to be giving some dirty social media tips um, for the lightning rounds later. So I'll be around, and I'll be at the Happiness Bar at 2.30, and you guys should come and speak. And if you think, like, I'm really cool because I don't have a lot of friends, you should follow my personal blog, <laughs> nappythoughts.com. <laughs> follow my personal blog and hit me up there, and we can go out. Have fun. Okay? Thank y'all. Y'all are amazing.